precious father this morning we thank you we give you all the glory and honor because you are the lord there is none like you thank you for your hand for your presence awesome presence in our midst thank you for the leading of the holy spirit thank you for the revelation of the truth thank you lord for you love us so much and we thank you for your commitment to our life and to your purpose in our life we are grateful father be thou exalted in jesus name Thank you for what you did in the Sunday school session and thank you for what you are doing now because it is a full package of your glory and of your greatness. Thank you, Father. To this morning, we ask that your presence will bring us closer to you like never before. We receive understanding of your ways, of your word, of your will, of your spirit Amen. and of your method Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. let the glory of the Lord be revealed in our lives Amen. that we will not be among the ignorant people Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. this morning Holy Spirit do the things that only you can do Amen. open the scriptures for us Amen. heal us Amen. save us Amen. deliver us Amen. help us Strengthen us, teach us, comfort us, and empower us. We thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's be seated. This morning I'm going to continue in our message, Strangers to Glory. The second group of people that are strangers to glory. In the workings of God and in the operations of the Spirit of God, we are in the season of glory. And it's important for you to know that. God doesn't work by what physical circumstances is saying. God works by his own program. God works by his own purpose. Most of the time, believers miss God because they look at what is happening around. And they want to use what is happening around to find out what God is doing. No, it doesn't work that way. God has his own program. God has his own plan. God has his own calendar that are very prophetic of the things he would do and the seasons he has chosen to do them. God doesn't work by the climate of the natural life. He doesn't work by the circumstances of life. That's why when you follow God, it will be impossible for your enemy to catch up with you. Because your enemy will be looking at physical signs. But God is working his program. He's working his purpose in our lives. Are you getting what I'm saying now? In the world, it is a season of famine. It is a season of, of lack. It's a season of want. But for God's people, this season is a season of glory. Is that okay? The light shines brighter when it is in the middle of dark, darkness. You know what I'm talking about? The light shines brighter when it is in the middle of thick darkness. When there is no darkness you will not know the value of light. But when there is thick darkness, the thicker the darkness, the brighter the light can shine. So when it looks like the economy of the world is crumbling, hope is dashing, and people are moving down, and it looks as if God is not doing something, that is the time that God has chosen to manifest his glory. God doesn't work by human calendar. He doesn't work by human government. He works by his own plan. He works by his own purpose. And his purposes are not just today. His purposes are eternal. The purpose of God is not incidental. It's not something he stumbled upon. Or something he just woke up and began to think that he should do. He had designed his purpose in, the, in eternity. Even before the beginning of the world. And one after the other. God is executing his purpose. 
I told you that 2020 is not just a calendar year. 2020 is a prophetic year. Because we are entering into another decade. Ten years. Another decade. So it is prophetic. And the Lord said, it is the season of glory. Is that okay? The next ten years is a season of glory. For those who follow God and who follow the truth, ten years to this time, you will see the difference in your life. Never see yourself in the grave 10 years to this time. Never see yourself sick and unable to stand up 10 years to this time. Never see yourself dead 10 years to this time. Never see yourself poor and uh, hopeless 10 years to this time. That's going to happen in the world. But 10 years to this time is the season of glory. Are you hearing me now? See yourself as prosperous. See yourself as alive, fully strong, walking and taking dominion for Jesus and advancing in the purpose of God and having resources to do the will of God for your life. Are you following what I'm saying now? Never see yourself down in the next 10 years. See yourself up. See yourself up. See yourself high. Never see yourself low. Never see yourself sad in the next 10 years. See yourself joyful in the Lord. See yourself happy in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I'm seeing myself in the next 10 years. The lands that will be conquered. The territories that will be taken. The glory of God that will be manifested. The things that I will begin to step into in the next 10 years. For me, it is not a time of sickness. It's not a time of disease. It's a time to move around in the will and the purpose of God. And advance his glory upon the earth. I want you to begin to see yourself like that because it is important to run with prophecy. It's important to run with prophecy. So if this season is the season of glory, there are groups of people that will become stranger to that glory. That group you must never belong to. The first group is what? What's the first group? Huh? What's the first group? This perpetual spiritual child. You remember? Those, when, you are, when, when you step into the season of glory, it is calling for growth. For spiritual growth and maturity. Are you following what I'm saying now? It is calling for spiritual growth and maturity. You cannot handle glory when you are immature. In fact, glory will kill you if you are immature. It takes maturity to handle glory. It takes maturity to handle promotion. It takes maturity to handle blessing, to handle abundance, to handle upliftment. When Joseph was lifted by God, it was maturity that helped him to handle the lifting. Such a way that it was not only a blessing to his brothers and family, it became a blessing to his entire generation. Did you get that now? If you are not mature, you will not be able to handle the glory. You will not be able to take proper advantage of the season of glory. I am shouting like a prophet. Because most people don't understand the next thing in the agenda of God. Because God is going to do the next thing in his own agenda. God is not going to do the next thing in your own agenda. God is not going to do the next thing in the agenda of the world. God is not going to do the next thing in the agenda of government of nations. Are you hearing me now? God is going to do the next thing in his own agenda. And being privileged of the Holy Spirit to know the next thing in the agenda of God. It is important for us to be prepared so that you can take advantage of it. We are in this season of glory. 2020 is ushering in a prophetic season of glory. Upon God's people and upon God's work on the earth. So what kind of a person are you going to be or should you be if you will not be a stranger to glory? And the Lord has shown us the first group of people are the perpetual spiritual child. Those who remain a child forever in the spirit. Those who do not grow. Those who do not want to grow. They will be strangers to glory. Many of you will remember these teachings. The next one, two, three, four years, 
and you will confirm what the Lord is doing. The second group of people that will be strangers to glory are the ignorant people. The ignorant people. When I say the ignorant people, I'm not talking about people that didn't go to school. I'm not talking about people that can't read. I begin to share with you what the ignorant people are. But last week, we just had the introduction. And let me read for you our central scripture. Hosea chapter 4. I'm going to read it again. Verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God's people can be destroyed. God's people can, be, can perish. Not because God is not powerful. Not because God is not good. I have seen a lot of God's people destroyed. I have seen things happen that shouldn't happen. That call for questions that make people to ask, is God really alive? Or is he really powerful? But why are God's people destroyed? The Bible says, for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge will destroy more than the devil can do. Lack of knowledge will create opportunity that the devil is looking for to destroy. The devil thrives in the atmosphere of ignorance. Sickness thrives. Disease thrives. Death thrives. Fear thrives. Every negative thing thrives in the atmosphere of ignorance. There is little or nothing that God can do for you as much as you remain ignorant. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? And he said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And not because the knowledge is not available, but look at the second statement. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. So it's not because the knowledge is not available, but because they reject the available knowledge. That's why they are destroyed. Last week we said knowledge of what? Knowledge of what? The knowledge of God, the knowledge of his ways, the knowledge of his word, the knowledge of his spirit, the knowledge of his method. Those five things are critical. Knowledge. That anyone who will manifest the glory of God must have the knowledge of God. You must know God personally. The knowledge of his ways. You must know the ways of God. The knowledge of his word. You must have a personal knowledge of the word of God. The knowledge of his spirit. You must have a dynamic current relationship with the Holy Spirit. The knowledge of his methods. You must know how God will do things that he will do. So that when people come to tell you this is God in action. You can know that it is a lie. God doesn't work like this. This is how God works. Are you hearing me now? <clears throat> when the glory is, is thick. The deception of the devil is also thick. We are in that season. That deception is on the increase because a lot of people will be seduced from the covering of glory by deception. That is why it is dangerous for you to remain ignorant. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We must know God personally. God personally. Work at it. Labor. Give time. Give sacrifice to know God personally. The knowledge of God is not cheap. Knowing God and his ways in a manner that will pro provoke the manifestation of the glory cannot happen instantly. It must require diligence, humility, consistency, focus, dedication, and consecration. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Shall renew their strength. Renewal of strength is not automatic. Renewal of strength is not cheap. From the renewal of strength to every other thing that the scripture talk about there is tantamount to the glory manifestation. 
it is on the price of waiting upon the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? May you know the labor to know, to know God. May you know the labor to do, the labor to labor, so that you can know God. So, and you know the Bible says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Shall make you free. I told you that deliverance is not a function of power. Deliverance is a function of the truth. It is the truth that you know that will make you free. So today, what I want to down, unveiling the ignorant people. Unveiling the ignorant people. Somebody may be well dressed and put on suit with very big Bible and you think it's a knowledgeable person about God. Unfortunately, he may turn out to be an ignorant person. An ignorant person cannot manifest glory in any aspect of life. Are you hearing me now? God doesn't give glory to lazy people. God doesn't give glory to lazy people. There are things that you must do before God will do the things that he must do. Who you are is important to what God can do in your life. Who you are is critical to what God can do in your life. If you are not the person you are supposed to be, God will be hindered from doing what he is supposed to do in your life. Even though he is the all-powerful God. Are you following me, too, beloved? Are you following me now? So you must become who you should become so that God would do what he should do. So unveiling the ignorant people. Who are the ignorant people? And you know when I'm talking, I'm talking about the believers. I'm not talking about the unbelievers. Because Osea chapter 4 verse 6 say, my people. So it's not talking about the people of the world. It's not talking about people that are not believers. It's talking about his people. Unfortunately, his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it calls for curiosity. How can they be his people and they still be destroyed? It shows that there is something wrong. And ignorance can make you become destroyed. Can stop you from manifesting the glory. So who are the ignorant people? For now, there are three categories of ignorant believers. And I want you to take note of them. Because I'm going to talk about one today. But let me list the three for you. The ignorant people are the believers. Number one, who do not know and do not want to know. That's the first set of ignorant people. There are many in these last days. They are the believers. And every time I mention believers in this sense, I always put it in inverted comma. Because their belief is very, their, being a believer is very questionable. They are believers, number one, who do not know and who do not want to know. Number two, they are believers who think they know when they don't know anything. They are believers who think they know when they don't know anything. There are many people like that today in our churches among the body of Christ who think they know but they don't know anything. About what? About God, about his word, about his ways, about his spirit, about his methods. Remember those five things. They think they know, but they don't know anything. Number three. Who are the ignorant people? The ignorant people are the believers who are ever learning, but are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They are ever learning. 
ever learning. Always in church. Always in Bible study. Always in mentoring school. Always in prayer fellowship. Always in all night. They have their notes. They write their notes. Always there. Ever learning. But you know what? They are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. How do you know that somebody is learning something? When the test of what he is supposed to have learned come. And he is able to utilize the knowledge that he has gathered. To deal with that situation. That person has learned. But when he is just learning. And the test of what he is learning shows up. And he still fail woefully as somebody who has never learned. He is not learning anything. These are the three basic groups of the ignorant people. Let me take it again. Those who do not know and who do not want to know. Their problem is very complicated. And that's why they will not manifest the glory. Because if you don't know and you want to know, very soon your ignorance will disappear. Yes or no? But we have a group of people today in the body of Christ among children of God who don't know God and who do not want to know. Who does not know the way of God and who are not ready to know his ways. Who don't know the spirit of God. They don't know the Holy Spirit and they are not ready to know the Holy Spirit. They don't know the method of God. They don't know the word of God and they are not ready to know it. Those are the groups that are many and dangerous in these last days. Don't be among that group. The second one are the people that think they know. They think they know. You know there was a time that Paul the Apostle thought he knew. Yes or no? He thought he knew. He was very zealous. Very passionate. He was religious. He, was, he thought he knew. But they don't know anything. And the third group are the people that are ever learning. They are in the right church. They are under the right atmosphere. They are listening to the right teaching. They get the truth. Their pastor is solid. Their teaching is balanced. Biblical. And they come every day. But they are never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The same thing will happen to them. Hosea 4.6. What will happen? They will be destroyed for lack of knowledge. Beloved. Don't be in any of this group. Because they will not manifest the glory. They will not take advantage of the season of glory. That we are in. So let me take the first one today. Those who do not know. And who do not want to know. Those who do not know. And who do not want to know. I'm going to share with you eight basic characteristics of this group. And I discover that in this last day, the reason the glory of God is very scarce is because there are many believers who do not know God and who do not care to know. Do you understand that? There are many believers. That's why the glory of God seems to be very scarce. What we parade in most places now is show. It's just show. Show. The glory is no longer there. There are a few places today that carry the authentic glory of God. Money can provide the best cathedral for us. But when the presence of God does not come upon that cathedral, the cathedral is not sanctified for God. You know when Solomon built the temple? How many of you remember that Solomon built the temple? It was magnificent. Mag spectacular. It was an architectural masterpiece that Solomon built for God. He used the best of materials. Gold. gold. All the items in the temple were made of gold. Not even silver. Gold. Everything was shining, shining, shining. But when he finished it still depended upon the presence of God to bring the glory. 
How many of you notice that? Hello? How many of you notice that? If you have read dedication of the temple, you will know that Solomon depended upon the presence of God to bring the glory of God into the temple. When he finished praying, the Bible said the glory of God descended such that the priest could not stand to minister. What difference does that make? So if the glory didn't come, a piece, the architectural design will be useless. Yes or no? Because people boast of money. The church of today boasts of money. The believers of today boast of money. We have money. We can do anything. Can I tell you something? We can have all the money, do all the buildings, but when the presence of God brings the glory, it remains useless. It is the glory that, it is the presence of God that brings the glory. There is a difference between glamour and glory. Money can bring glamour into your life. Connection and uh, position can bring glamour into your life. But it can't bring the glory. It cannot bring the glory. It takes the presence of God to bring the glory down. And whatever irritates the presence of God in your life will disconnect you from the glory that it brings. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody can, we can worship under the best of cathedral. That every material, every gadget in that cathedral is ultra modern. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I have, I have stood behind a remote control pulpit before when I went to preach in Abuja. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. When they, you know, I told some when they, when they just press a button, all the chairs will just they fold by themselves and then talk in. And then the, 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 the pulpit will all fold by itself and talk in. And everything is remote control. What, wonderful. Praise God. And they had to take me through the gadget so that I won't fold myself with the pulpit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Now, I have no problem with that. That's what money can do. But you know what? It doesn't bring the glory. That is the mistake we're having today. We believe that when there is money, we can do everything. No. There are things we will never be able to do until we carry the glory of God. Don't let money be your confidence. Let the glory of God be your confidence. Are you getting what I'm saying now? When Esther appeared, because she doesn't have money, but the glory of God was upon her, she was preferred. Yes or no? She was preferred. The, the king chose her and said, this is the queen. And let the contest stop because I have found my queen. I want to pray for you that you will carry the glory of God. Amen. That your work will carry the glory of God. Amen. Your family, your life will carry the glory of God. Amen. Pursue the glory. Don't let the devil give you pseudo glory. Don't let the devil give you pseudo glory. So it's possible for us to be in the best of ultra modern cathedral. And everything is, you know, shining and bright and everything. And unfortunately, the glory of God is not there. We have only wasted our time. And it is also possible for us to be under bamboo, under bamboo tree, worshipping under bamboo that you cover with palm front. And you know what? And the glory of God is there. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That glory is important. It's a critical factor. And the presence of God is very important to bring that glory down. So that's why we don't have the glory today. The glory is very scarce today. Money is increasing. Glamour is increasing. But glory is scarce. The glory of God is scarce. If you are a child of God, when you enter a place where there is glory of God, your spirit will leap. You will know that, look, there is glory of God here. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That the glory of God is here. So, we are the, the, the glory of God is very scarce today. Why? Because we have believers who do not know God and who do not care to know him. And let me tell you some of the characteristics of those believers and then we'll pray. Number one, they are satisfied with the taste and state of ignorance. 
they are satisfied with the taste and state of ignorance. There is a taste of ignorance. There is a state of ignorance. There is a taste of ignorance. Many people have tasted ignorance. But there is also a what? A state of ignorance. When it is a taste, you can run back. When you taste ignorance and you see how bad it is, you can run back to God. When you taste ignorance and you see how, what you have lost, you can run back to God. Did you get what I'm saying now? But when it becomes a state of ignorance, you are settled in ignorance. In fact, some people will even become proud of ignorance. So the ignorant people, those who don't know and who don't want to know, they are satisfied with the taste and the state of ignorance. They like to remain ignorant. They are satisfied. Any attempt to bring them out of ignorance is rebuffed. They don't want to know the truth. Talk less of the truth, making them free. They are happy in the position of ignorance. It suits their carnality. It is very convenient for their sinful nature. To remain ignorant. And they don't want to do anything to get out of it. Such people are covered with darkness. They cannot enjoy the light of God. They can't enjoy the light of the truth. And so they cannot manifest the glory. Are you following me now? That's the first characteristic. They are satisfied. You know, anyone who is going to manifest the glory must yearn. Somebody say yearn. You must be yearning for something more. You know there is more. There is more. There is more I must know. There is more I must do. There is more I must become. But when people become satisfied, they are complacent. They are restful. There is no agitation. There is no passion. They just like the way they are. And they believe it cannot get better about anything in their life. They are not looking for improvement. They are not passionate for growth. They, there is no curiosity at all. They just feel we are okay. They are the people who do not know and who do not want to know. They are satisfied with the taste and the state of ignorance. May you not be that person. Paul the apostle said, not that I had already attained, but I go after. I pursue. I pursue more. I go on. I'm pursuing after. I'm pursuing. Look at Philippians chapter 3. When you are complacent in terms of the knowledge of God, the knowledge of his word, the knowledge of his ways, the knowledge of his method and the knowledge of his spirit, you are in the group of the ignorant people. God himself is dynamic. You cannot know him in one day. You cannot know him enough. Let me read Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Not as though I had already attained either were already perfect but i follow after do we have somebody today who will follow after is there anybody here who will follow after god doesn't give to you what you are not pursuing god doesn't give to you what you think should come to meet you where you are that passion must be there i want to know god more i want to know him more i want to know his ways more Oh, there are many things to know about God that up till now we have not yet known. I challenge myself every time. 
I want to know God more. I just want to study more. I want to know him more. I want to know the Holy Spirit more. I want to know his ways more. I want to, as long as you have not yet deception proof, it shows that there is still some things you need to know. As long as there is still that possibility for deception to come in, then there is, is a proof that there is still something you must know. You must know. Many of us have not known God the way we should know him. Are you following what I'm saying now? And that is what should be the agitation of your mind. Paul the apostle said, but I follow after. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Do you know the meaning? I follow after. If I can understand the reason why God decided to choose me. If I can become the reason why God decided to touch my life. If I may apprehend the purpose for which I am apprehended of Christ. I follow after. But you know this set of group, this set of ignorant people who do not know God and who are not willing to know, they are satisfied. Did you hear what I just said? They are satisfied with this taste of ignorance and with the state of ignorance. In fact, when you make effort to bring them out of ignorance, they fight you. They rebuff you. They are the group of people that say, leave us as we are. Leave where we are good to go this way. Leave us as we are. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Such people can never manifest the glory. We have too many of them in the body of Christ. There are too many of them in the body of Christ. Number two, they despise the knowledge of God and his ways. That is a show that they don't want to know. They despise the knowledge of God and his ways. They despise the knowledge of the spirit of God. They despise the knowledge of the word of God. They despise the knowledge of the ways of God. They despise the knowledge of the methods of God. What is going to benefit them? What is going to liberate them? They despise it. They cast as passion on the things that are ordained for their freedom. The people that God has anointed for their freedom. The places that God has anointed for their freedom. The truth, the revelation that God has anointed for their freedom, they cast as passion on it. They despise it. They celebrate the wrong people in their life. And they despise the right people in their life. May you not be that kind of a person. May you not be that kind of a person. The Bible says, in as much as they refuse to retain the knowledge of God in their thoughts, God gave them to over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. How many of you know that the devil is dealing with human beings now? The devil is dealing with human beings. The devil is destroying human beings now because human beings have rejected the knowledge of God. There is no like software Weary. There is nothing. When a man is sleeping with a fellow man, what do you think he is? What do you think he is? Is he a human being again? The devil has molested human beings. The devil has dehumanized human beings. The humanity in us has been destroyed because we refuse the knowledge of God. How can somebody bleach his body until there is no layer of skin again to bleach? In the name of fashion. That is losing your humanity, losing your sense, losing your humanness. How can women and women be sleeping together? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? In Europe now, they have legislated that, they have made a legislation, they have approved it that human beings can sleep with animals in Europe now. It is a government legislation that human beings can sleep with dog. Okay? A human, be, be it a man or a woman, a man can buy a dog that is a female and begin to sleep with the dog. A woman can buy a dog that is a male and begin to sleep with that. That is the devil dehumanizing us. 
Why? Because we do not have a place for the knowledge of God in our thinking. May you not be an animal. And most of the people that are indulged in such things are the people you think are big people. Are the people you think are people that have gone to school. People that you would think are better than you. Just because they have money, they have name, they are powerful people, they are well read, but they are stupid people. If there is any language to use to de describe them, we will use it for them. Anyone who does not know Christ is just an animal. Because your thought can be hijacked by the devil. I told you of a man that said he wanted to look like a lion. How many of you remember? And he spent millions of naira wanting to look like a lion. What an obsession. What an obsession. How, how can a man get to the level of thinking that he doesn't know anything to do again, that the only thing that he's obsessed about is, I want to look like a lion. And you can trust the soldier. They place him under their scalpel. They want Tunda. They recreated him. He looked exactly like lion. Every like lion. And everybody was running away from him. At the end of the day, he was lonely and frustrated. He committed suicide. That is where the devil is taking him to. That is where the lack of knowledge of God will take you to. Toba molon wa dada kuda. It's a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You know, there are people today that are, they call themselves believers, but they despise the knowledge of God. Beloved, never, never despise the knowledge of God. Never, never despise the knowledge of his word, the knowledge of his spirit. Never, never despise it. Never cast as passion on the revelation of the truth. Be a believer that is, that is embracing the knowledge of God. Either it is palatable or not. That's when you can be saved. That's when you can reason like a human being. Are you following what I'm saying now? Praise God. But we have a group of believers today that despise the knowledge of God. When you are too used to the ways of men, the ways of God will be strange to you. When you are too used to the methods of God, the methods of God will be funny to you. When you are too used to the words of man, the words of God will be ridiculous in your sight. Get yourself away from the words of man. Learn the word of God. Speak the word of God. Think the word of God. Don't let the ways of men confuse you. Don't let the methods of men confuse you. Don't be too attached to the ways of men. That you lose regard for the ways of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are certain things that when you are too familiar with the ways of men. When they say God can do this. You will say no, 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 no. It's not possible. It's not possible. It's not possible. Because you are familiar with the ways of men. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? May you not be in the group that despises the knowledge of God. May you not be in the group that casts as passion on the things that God has ordained for your freedom. For your salvation. In the name of Jesus. When they have the knowledge of God, they will just begin to laugh. They despise it. They tell you it's not as serious as you think. Uh, they, they just cast as passion on it and wave it up with a wave of hand. Such people are the ignorant people. They are the people who do not know and who do not want to know. They will not manifest the glory of God. Number three. They do not know they are God. I want to pray for you today. May you know your God. Oh, may you know your God. Just put it down. They do not know their God. I'm going to say some other things that are going to add to it. But let's stop at them for now. They do not know their God. They do not know their God. May you know your God. You are not saying amen very well. Yeah. Uh, may you know your God. Yeah. You know there is a level that God is our God. That's a level of knowledge of God. God is our God. There is a level that God is his God. God is his God. And that is the best level that God is my God. My God. Did you hear what I'm saying? Now? You know, David came to that level. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. 
He didn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is his shepherd. He had known God beyond our and his. He knew God personally. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What is, the, that's the highest level of the knowledge of God. When you know God beyond the God they are describing for you. When you know God beyond the God they are describing to you. Because nobody can describe God to you completely the way the Bible has described God to you. People describe God in the view of their experiences and encounter. And most times when their experiences and encounter are not palatable, they will paint another God for you which is different from the God of the Bible. Did you hear what I'm saying now? So when your Christianity is only my brother say, my pastor say, this say, this say, and there is nothing like the Bible say, you are likely to know the God that is being described to you and not the God that you have personal encounter with. And in the real thickness of storms, you need personal knowledge of God. I can't guarantee you that my experience of God will save you when you get into your own storm. I cannot guarantee. I cannot guarantee that my description of God will help you to stand in the middle of the storms of life. But I can guarantee you that your personal knowledge of God through the word of God can save you in the middle of the greatest storms of life. I can guarantee that. Are you hearing me now? Because the Bible says the scriptures cannot be broken. The Bible is the best descriptor, description that God can be given. The Bible is the best descriptor of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? No other person or book can describe the God that is real better than the Bible. So when you don't know the Bible, you know God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Praise God. Have you had some women talk to their daughters before about what men can be? They talk to their daughter based upon the experience they have with their husband. Sometimes if the experience is not positive, they will mislead that young girl. They will tell the lady that hey, hey, men are very stupid though. Men are very wicked though. Don't tell them everything though. Don't do say this though. Now, she to her, she's canceling that girl. But she is canceling that game through the window of her pain. And it may turn out to be a wrong counsel. And it's going to do damage in the life of that lady. Because the lady will see a wrong picture of man. Are you hearing me now? And then she may decide not to marry again. Or if she marries, she may become a tragedy to that man. And then the course will continue in the next generation. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? No human beings can give you the safest description of God. No matter how much they know God. Everybody has peculiar experiences that are peculiar to them. According to... Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Walk. God is peculiar. Follow what I'm saying now. My road is peculiar. So, the may not, it's, it, it may be good to encourage you, may be good, but that is not the best you should have. Are you following what I'm saying now? After you have heard about God, the Bible, you don't get what I'm saying now. After you have heard about God, after you have heard about God, you must go back to the Bible and encounter that God personally. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Praise God. You must know the God of the Bible. Not just the God of Moses. Not God, the God of Moses is the God that doesn't forgive people when you beg him. Because Moses begged God, please, sorry, please, sorry, please, sorry. God told him, don't beg me again. Don't raise this issue again. It is final. You will never get to that promised land. The best I can do for you is to climb on the Mount of Pisgah and you will see the land of Pharaoh. But to get there, forget it because you did not honor me. If that is the God you have, you will have a wrong understanding of the God of the New Testament. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise that there is a God for you. Tell somebody I have a God. It's the God of the Bible. Know him personally. Know him personally. Know him personally. 
those people who do not know God and who do not want to know, number three, they do not know their God. Unfortunately, they depend on the God being described to them in the view and experience of other people and not the God they have personally known and encountered. They depend upon the God that other people are describing. Not the God that they personally know. Not the God that they have personally encountered. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. Let me give you an example. I can come to church on Sunday and begin to tell you how God provides. Hello, somebody. And I tell you that if you have faith in God, God is going to provide for you. That's good testimony, isn't it? That's good testimony. That good, that's good testimony. And I come and I tell you, I say, well, there was a particular day. There was no money in the house. There was no food in the house. There is nothing that is not. And I pray and I say, God, don't put me to shame. I release my faith and all that. And uh, 30 minutes after I prayed, somebody just showed up. God just made provision. We clap. We say, yes, that's good. That's a good testimony. But listen to me. It may not work exactly the same way for you. Because I won't tell you, I won't tell you that that came around because of the faith I have been developing for the last 30 years. Did you hear that? That I was able to stand and believe God will show up. When there was nothing around. I won't tell you that that is the result of a faith life of 36 years. Working with God for 36 years. So you that just gave your life to Jesus today. You want to see God in that way. And then it doesn't happen that way. And then you get, you concluded wrongly that God loves some people more than some people. You say this thing they call faith doesn't work. Are you getting what I'm saying now? I have described God for you, but I have described God higher than your level of faith. You need to go back to the Bible. Know your God. Tell somebody, know your God. Know your God. Go back to the Bible. May you know God personally. May you know God personally. That's why I tell people, as you go with the Lord, don't waste your negative experiences. Your negative experiences are teaching you something about God. Your positive experiences are teaching you something about God. Most times we throw away our negative experiences. We don't learn anything from them. There are many critical lessons of life that you will never learn in positive circumstances. That you are going to learn in negative experiences. Not because God is wicked, but because that is part of your development. Is somebody hearing me now? How many of you have prayed that God should give him food and God never showed up? How many of you? <laughs> And you go to beg hungry. <laughs> How many of you? Because if I come to church and say God will always show up for you anytime you pray. And then you go back and pray. God give me dinner tonight. And God didn't show up. And that was the night you slept hungry. If you are not careful you will say there is no God. But do you know what God is trying to teach you by that? I you learn a lesson. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. May you know God personally. Do you know what God is working out? Do you know what God is working out? When the prophet said by this time tomorrow a, a, a measure of flour will be sold at one shekel in the gate of Samaria 24 hours. This is a place where they have been killing their children and there was no food to eat and a prophet just spoke like that. Who will ever think that God is going to use lepers? Three lepers. Leper. 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 If you are thinking of who God will use to bring that kind of supply would you ever think of leper? Talk to me. Would you ever think of leper? But God used leper. Leper. <laughs> leper. They went into the camp of the Syrians. Because they are hungry. So they concluded, if they kill us, let them kill us. After all, either they kill us or they don't, if they don't kill us, hunger will kill us. So let us take this bold step. So if we die, we die. And they enter into that camp. And they discovered there was nobody in that camp. And everything they needed in Samaria was there. How many of you know that everything you need is no longer in heaven? They've left when Jesus died and rose again. 
they are already here. How many of you understand now? The money you need is not in heaven. They don't print money in heaven. If you say they print, they will tell you which currency. Are they going to print Naira there? Or are they going to print um, dollar there? So any pastor or prophet that comes to you and says there is a miracle alert, there is a miracle alert, is demonic. Nobody prints dollar in heaven. If they print dollar in heaven, the whole world will go on, on protest. We will protest against God and say, ah, why did you choose dollar? Why don't you, you choose Naira? Nigeria will talk of Naira. Ghana will talk of cities. Yes or no? Everybody would, and God will be in trouble. But they don't print money in heaven. All the money you will ever need is where now? Is here. Do you know somebody has what you need now? What you are looking for now? Somebody has it now. But God knows how to arrange situation to take you to what you need. Are you getting what I'm saying now? How many of you hear what I'm saying? So they discovered that everything, there was nobody in that camp. The whole place is empty. They went, they ate, they ate, thinking that somebody would say, what are you doing there? Nobody. They ate very well, ate very well, ate very well, thinking that well, you better eat now, you don't know. Maybe the next minute you are going to die. So let's eat very well. After, after all, it is not good to go to heaven hungry. Yes or no? <laughs> it's not good to go to heaven hungry. It's not good. One man of God said the day is going to die. That is going to be a Sunday. And I quite agree with him. He said it's going to be a Sunday. That he will return from church. And he will sit down. He will eat pandedia. And drink very well. And then go to his bed and sleep. And then it will pass. Oh God Almighty, I love that kind of death. That is, I will be fasting and I will just die in fasting. Praise God. Eh? Praise God. <laughs> so they ate very well. And then it occurred to them. Let's let's gather some food. Let's let's keep some. They went, he did. Nobody, nobody stopped them. They carry everything they could carry. Hide everything they could carry. And they said, we're not doing well, though. Let us go to the king and announce. You see how God walked his word by prophet, just using the leper. When God spoke that word, God had done it. It caused the Syrians to hear the noise of war. And they began to run when there was nobody pursuing them. Can you imagine? Hello? If you want to run, is it it that when you take your car, you will run faster? How many of you can run with your leg faster than a car? Is it possible? But these people were so much afraid that they left their camel, their donkey, they left everything. They took to their heels. Your enemy will take to his heels. And they left everything. And those things became the fulfillment of the word that God has spoken. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? May you know God personally. Amen. May you know God personally. Amen. Don't let problem of life color your view of God to the point that you are so hopeless and you believe that there is nothing positive that can happen. If God can make a dead man to come back to life, there is nothing that he cannot do for you. Do you get what I'm saying now? Nothing is impossible with God. If God can make a dead man to come back alive, God can still do more to them. But you know these people that are, that are ignorant? They don't know they are God. They depend upon the God being described to them in the view and the experience of others. And not the God they have personally known and encountered. Number four. They are weak. Those who don't have personal knowledge of God are weak. When I say weak, I mean they are weak spiritually. They are weak spiritually. They are weak in the spirit. And they are open to all kinds of exploitation. Those who don't know and who don't want to know God are weak spiritually and they are open to all kinds of exploitation the devil will exploit them little things they are afraid 
Little things, they are jolted. Little things, they are destabilized. Because they are weak in the spirit. They have no strength in the spirit. They have no stand in the spirit. They have no stamina in the spirit. They can't have, they don't have the energy of the spirit to resist the devil. The Bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you. They can't resist the devil because they are weak because they do not know God personally. And they are not willing to know God. And they are open to all kinds of exploitation. Beloved, we are in the season that the false prophets are feasting on the ignorance and stupidity of many children of God. Somebody said, if every believer will know the God of the Bible, the false prophet will be out of business. And I agree with him. Are you hearing me now? I agree with him. The riches of the false prophet is a product of your ignorance. It is an anathema for anybody who is a member of a Bible-believing and Bible-preaching church to still be walking about and patronizing false prophet. That's why your prayer has not been heard by God. You don't come to a church like this and still patronize false prophet. What do they want to tell you that you don't already know? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people that we may show forth the praise of him that has called us out from darkness into his marvelous light. May you stand in your place. And may you be the person that God said you are. Look at the book of Daniel. Chapter 11. I see the Holy Spirit coming to strengthen you today. And to deliver us from the dangers of ignorance. And to empower us to manifest the glory of God. In these last days. Daniel chapter 11. Verse 32. Daniel 11 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But, somebody say, but the people that what? Are you with me? The people that know their God shall be what? Strong. And what will they do? They do exploit. Do you know the glory factor is in your strength? The glory factor is in your exploit. You will be strong Strong, you will do exploit when you know your God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But these people, they are weak because they don't know their God. And they are open to all kinds of exploitation because they don't know their God. The food they can't eat for themselves, they go and give it to one false prophet. The money they can't spend for themselves. The money they can't give to their church, they'll go and give to one false prophet. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And those people will be living large and enjoying themselves. Somebody told me very recently, the, the, the son had a problem and then he heard of one, one man on the radio that they are talking about, that they are talking about, and then he was so tempted by the devil and uh, to go and to go to meet that man. That man is not is not even a false prophet. He's not even a false prophet. <laughs> it's a complete herbalist. And they are talking about him. And then he said, well, this problem, he, they say he specializes on it. That he will, he will, will deal with it. And then when he get there, that was 60,000. See, bring the 60,000. And then he can do the things he will do. That's the end of the problem. And then this man went look for the 60,000. And then got there. They did everything, gave it to him. He said that was when the problem increased. He said he regretted that he ever got there. He did, the problem increased times four. Are you hearing me now? The problem increased times what? Times four. And he said he now called the man again. The man didn't take the call. 
He called again. The call, the phone switch off. He called again. Over, he kept calling, 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 calling. They say the number does not exist. I said, why are you telling me now? He said, I just want you to know how far I've gone. He said, welcome home. God can deliver you. Praise God. Let me tell you, the devil has nothing to give you. The devil has nothing to give you. I tell people, the problem that God cannot solve, let it remain there. Did you hear? Did you hear? The problem that God cannot solve. Assuming there is one. Then let it remain there. After all, it is not me. It is him. If they say God can't do this, let him remain there. Who told you that the devil will be able to do what God can do? Answer me. Assuming God can't do it. Is it the devil that will be able to do it? Praise God. Not to talk of there is nothing God cannot do. The Bible says with God how many things? All things are possible. The problem we have is that sometimes we don't want to wait for him. Number four. No, number five now, isn't it? This group of people they consider the time and effort required to know God and his ways as a waste. They consider the time and the effort required to know God and his ways as a waste. They consider it as a waste. So they are always very restless in, in the presence of God. They are always very restless in the presence of God. They are always very restless. Uh, they are always in a haste. Either they are personally in the presence of God or they are, we are corporately in the presence of God. They have a feeling that God is wasting my time. They have a feeling that the time that they used to learn about God is a wasted time. They have a feeling that what coming to church on Sunday, what does he add to my life? It's just a waste of time. They have a feeling that coming to Bible study is a waste of time. They have a feeling that having personal devotion at home is just a waste of time. That is a demonic feeling. Because there is something that you are getting in the presence of God regularly that is adding to your life to make it become what it should be. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So those who do not know and who are not ready to know, they consider the time and the effort required to know God and his ways as a waste. Their eyes is always on the clock in the service. They have a sense from the beginning of the service that pastor is wasting our time. But they are the same set of people that can sit with a seasoned film and spend four hours, six hours and they still want more. The same set of people. Are you hearing me now? When they come to service like this or a program like this, they are always in a haste. Always in a haste. Very unsettled. Very restless. Well, it's like they are just telling you ah, let's do it and, and go. Let's do. But they are the same set of people that will be so relaxed in a party for six hours. Even when you tell them, let's go home, they say, we are Faji is still in my body. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. They consider the time and the effort they are using to know God as a waste of time. That's why they are restless. They have time for other irrelevant and frivolous things. I tell people, when people say, I don't have time, 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 it is because that thing is not yet important to you. Yes or no? Yes or no? When you say, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, it is because that thing that you don't have time for is not yet important to you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise God. It's not yet important to you. 
if it is important to you, you will find time for it. You know, the way I structure my phone, that is a sound it brings when I take the call. Even when I'm praying, even when I'm praying, I will excuse myself and say, Father, I have to take this call. I'll take the call. And there is a sound it will bring that I don't have to take the call until I'm through and I'm ready. Are you hearing me now? The group of people in the first group that I have to take the call. My biological father is an old man now. Are you hearing me now? My wife. My children. Except I don't hear it. Once I hear it, I pick it. The members of Abundant Grace Assembly have done it such a way that once you call, I pick it. Except I'm not there and then my ministerial parent. Those group of people, even when I'm praying, the phone rings. I know if I have to take it. So I pick it. I'll tell God I'm sorry I have to take this call. I'll take it because that's part of my experience, my responsibility. Are you following what I'm saying now? But any other one that is not in that group, I don't have to take it. When I'm not ready to what? To take it. Are you following what I'm saying now? Why? Because people are more important to me than the other people. The first group of people are more important to me. More important to my colleague. More important to me than any other set of group of people. So I have all time for them. Let me tell you. You will always have time for what is important to you. When you, do, when, you don't have to, when you don't have time, it is because that thing is not yet important. How many of us have time to eat at least once in a day? At least you have time to eat at least once in a day. I'm not talking of two times, three times, but just at least one. Huh? Can you be too busy, too busy that the whole day just forget you have not eaten? Huh? Is it possible? No. Praise God time for it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Have time. They don't have time. But when death comes, they have time for death. We went to bury a woman this, uh, I think on Friday, and the pastor that was preaching was talking about how the woman died. Nobody had any inclination she was going to die. I don't even think she has any inclination she was going to die. She's an 80-year-old woman. Very strong and fit. Are you hearing me now? And then she sat down. She had attended to some people. She sat down. They brought her breakfast. The tea that she loves. And uh, they mixed it very well with good milk. And then she was about taking it. And then the thing just fell down. And then that was all. And that was all. What did I say? That was all. Off she goes to eternity. When death comes knocking, people have time. Do you think that man, that woman believes she won't finish that food? When they gave it to her, she wanted to, Abby, looks like drama. The person that prepared the food looks like drama. Eh, eh, mama, mama, mama. Let's press her. Let's press her. They press her. Mm, mm, mm. Mama is gone. Never again to come back again for life. It was when they lower her into the grave on Friday that they say, so you are gone. I say, you stay with you. <laughs> you stay with you. You stay here with you. Praise God. Don't be the person that doesn't have time for God, but when death comes, you have time. 
Everybody will have time for death. When death comes, you have time to die. Are you hearing me now? Create time for God. You know what, what David said? He said, my times are in your hand. Let your times be in the hand of God. Don't consider the time you spend in knowing God a waste. Don't be among the ignorant people. Number six. They believe it is some special group of people like the pastors. And other notable spiritual leaders that are called to know God. That's the belief of those who don't know and who those who want to know. They will tell you, am I a pastor? That I will be reading the Bible every day? They say it's the job of the pastor to read the Bible every day. I don't know where the Bible says so. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from the mouth of the pastor. Is that what he says? This book of the law shall not depart in the mouth of the spiritual leaders. Is that what he says? That's why some people don't even know when spiritual leaders are wrong. Are you hearing me now? Because there are times that some spiritual leaders are wrong. If you go back and check the Bible yourself, you discover they are wrong. But because he has a belief that it is only some special group of people, people like pastors, like evangelists, like apostles, those that are called to the ministry, they are the one that should know God. That's why he doesn't know and he doesn't want to know. Beloved, you are called to know God. Tell somebody, I am called to know God. It is not the calling of the pastor. It's not the calling of some special people. You, in, in God's purpose, you are special. Did you hear me? Somebody say, I'm special. In God's purpose, you are special. So don't have that mindset. That how can, I read, how can I be reading the Bible every day? Am I a pastor? How many of you have had people talk like that before? I have had people say that severally. Uh-uh. We read the Bible every day. Am I a pastor? Do I want to sit for work or for jam in Bible? That I will be reading the Bible every day. How can you say I, I should be praying every day? Uh-uh. If I'm praying every day, what will the pastor do? What's your problem with what the pastor is doing? You just know and do what you are supposed to do. Beloved, it is not the pastors alone that should know God. Every believer is called to know God. Your work with God will be impossible if you don't know God. You must know God. The Bible says two cannot work together except they agree. Agreed means they should, they should know themselves. God already knows you. You must know him. Tell somebody, you must know God. Say it again. So they are satisfied. So those people that believe that, well, it's only the pastor that should pray. It's only the pastor that should read the Bible. It's only the pastor that should do all those things. I'm not a pastor. So after all, anytime I come to church, my pastor will teach me everything. Uh, that's what we are paying him for. Ah, he should teach us everything. I don't have to be the one looking for him. Let him do the teaching. Many people have that mindset. And so when their pastor tells them to do what is against the Bible, they go ahead and do it. Because they themselves don't know God. So they are satisfied with paying the pitiable price of ignorance. If you cannot pay the price of knowledge, you will pay the pitiable price of ignorance. Do you understand now? Knowledge has price. Yes or no? Ignorance also has what? Price. So those people that do not know God for themselves, they will be paying the pitiable price of ignorance. They will be paying the pitiable price of deception. And they will be paying the pitiable
unspeakable price of destruction. I have two more to go, beloved. Number seven. Those who don't know God and who do not want to know God, they select churches and services they attend. You know that has come to stay in the world today. They select churches and services they attend. They do not like churches and services that emphasize personal knowledge of God and his word. They do not like churches and services that emphasize personal knowledge of God and his word. No. They don't want churches and services that emphasize spiritual growth and development. No, they don't want. They don't want church and services that emphasize discipline and discipleship. They don't want it. They only want bless me services and bless me churches. How many of you know we have bless me churches? Bless me services. And I ask people, if everything about God is just blessing, 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 and there is no maturity, how will you be able to handle the blessing when they come? How many of you know blessing can kill? Hello? How many of you know blessing can kill? If there is no commensurate maturity to handle it. I tell somebody, I said, what will you do if, you, if, if they give you 10 million naira now? Hello? Are you with me? I told somebody, I said, what will you do if, if they just give you 10 million naira? He said, I will first of all run mad. I said, and that's why they won't give you. If 10 million can make you mad, ah, you are not big inside to handle it. He said, I will work all year with it now. Eh? 10 million. Ah, 10 million. Ah, 10 million. Ah, first of all, I said, you, you see, see that? 10 million. You want to run mad. 10 million. You want to run mad. You hear what I'm saying? Huh? Let me tell you, nothing kills faster than joy if you are not mature. If you are not mature, joy will kill you faster. So if the, if, if the church is all about bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, and there is no teaching and truth of maturity and growth and discipline and discipleship and all that, we will misuse the blessing. Anyone who is teaching you, who is telling you that you will be blessed, when he's not training you to be mature, to handle the blessing, he's not helping you. But those that don't know God, and don't want to know God, they, see, they, they don't like churches and services that speaks about discipline and discipleship. They don't like churches and services that emphasize holiness and consecration. When you hear holiness, they don't like it. When they talk of consecration, they don't like it. They like church and services that will say, you are okay as you are. God does not discriminate. They say, yes, pastor. Tell them. Tell them. I ask myself, who are they telling? Is it tell them? Tell them. You see, there are bundles of rebellious people with rebellious pastor. Because sometimes I look at some scriptures in the Bible and they say, follow peace with all men. And holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Is that in the Bible? Is that in the Bible? And somebody said, don't worry. Jesus has paid the price of everything. Just just be as you are. God doesn't discriminate. That's a feel-good service. That's not the truth. 
That's a feel-good service. Oh, Jesus has done what he should do. So that you should be able to do what you should do. Jesus has not done everything. No. Mm -mm, Jesus didn't do what you should do. He has done everything that he should do. Did you hear me now? They say even when you continue to commit sin, God has said Jesus has paid for it. The way Jesus sin is what? Oh, is death. Oh. Is that in your Bible? Somebody. The wages of sin is what? Is death. We have people today, we have all kinds of strange doctrines today. And so people have choices. If you want to go, if you, there are many churches you can go today. In those days, we don't have too many options. But now we have too many options. Hello? How many of you know there are many churches now? Hello? Too many options. If you want to marry five wives and you and they will still ordain you as a pastor, there is a church that will accommodate you. They say no problem. There is a church of Satan and they have members. And it's a fast growing church. And the people that are there are not angels from heaven. They are human beings. I told myself, when somebody is in church of Satan, as disciples, ah, ah, are you blind? And you enter. <laughs> yes, they enter. Praise God. We have options now. But make sure you are taking the right option. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I don't want to go to church and come back the same way I, I went. I don't want to go to a church where a pastor will waste my time. Telling him me the story of when he went to London. And when he went to Germany. And when he flew from Germany to Australia. What has that got to do with my salvation? I don't need all those stories. I need the truth of the word of God. That can touch my life and change my heart. I need to know God more. I need to know how to walk in his ways. I need to be equipped in spiritual warfare. How to deal with the battles of life. I need to hear words that will develop my faith. And put me back on the right track. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now? Let me say the last one. As we pray. This afternoon. Those who don't know. And those who don't want to know. They love churches and services that are entertainment based. They love churches and services that are entertainment based. When somebody comes to church and tells you to preach very briefly, I ask myself, what exactly is the main business of church? If what the main business is now done briefly, Have you gone to any school and they say the teachers should teach briefly? Answer me. Huh? Have you seen a school and they say the teachers should teach what? Briefly. And then the other things they are doing has nothing to do with education. Because the teachers have taught briefly. Will you take your children to that school? Wouldn't you rather take your children to a school that they, they, they will teach very well after the normal teaching, they will still do a extramora lesson. Wouldn't you want to take your children to that kind of school? But will you go to a place where they teach briefly? It's supposed to be between 8 and 2. But the old is between 8 and 10. Because briefly, every lesson compress it briefly. Teach briefly. And after 10, they start to do other things that has no relevance with education. You will like that school for your child? Wouldn't you rather go to a school that they, after teaching 8 to 2, they still take 3 to 5 lessons? Extra moral lessons. Wouldn't you want to pay extra? Talk to me. Why does, why does church have to be different? You can dance in your house, isn't it? There are other things you can do in your house. But what I'm doing now, 
you can't do it in your house. When you are coming to church, you must come with the mindset that I want to come and hear God. And when God speaks, your life can never remain the same. But those that don't know and do not want to know, they love churches and services that are entertainment based. They would rather attend miracle service instead of maturity service. That's why many that got the miracle actually are losing the miracle. Because it takes greater discipline to maintain the miracle you have received. Miracle will come by faith. Maintaining the miracle will come by discipline. Many people have been delivered, but they get entangled again. Those who don't know and who don't want to know, they love prophetic and miracle services that excite them and satisfy their carnal curiosities. When I gave my life to Jesus, 36 years ago, what is common that time is, shall I teach more? Do you want more of the teaching? But today, 36 years after, elder, what is common now is, shall I prophesy? They say prophesy. Prophetic oracle. Prophetic browser. They say prophesy. Prophetic internet. Prophesy. Hello? Are you hearing me now? People are excited. People are excited. People are excited. People are excited. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? We have too many people that have become like a spectator in the stadium today inside the church when they are supposed to be a partaker of the operations of the spirit they are just spectating they are getting excited your father's name is dada what does that got to do with your destiny your mother what does that got to do with i enter your house now as i enter your house you took your fridges on the uh, this little side there's a tree in front of your house. There's this. Fine. But at the end of the day, what does it bring you? The only thing it brings is excitement. And the truth of it is that you don't need the Holy Spirit to say those things. The devil also can show you certain things. The difference is not in prophecy. The difference is, is in the word. The word of God. And our compliance with the truth. That's the difference. The Bible didn't say ye shall know them by their gift. It says ye shall know them by their what? By their fruit. Can you have a fruit without the seed? Answer me. Can there be a fruit without the seed? What is the seed? Is it prophecy? What is the seed? The seed is the word of God. Nobody can have the fruit without the seed of the word of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now? They love to, to, to attend services that will excite them. Not services that will change them. Not services that will bring them to God. Not services that will empower them and train them. And that's why they remain ignorant. And they cannot manifest the glory of God. I want to pray for you today. That you will be excited by the things that matter to God. That the things that will attract you. The things that will be attractive to you. Will be the things that are ordained for your destiny. In the name of Jesus. As I pray today. There is this description of today's church. And when I hear that description, many times, it makes me cry. And many times, it is a reflection of the fact that 
the priorities of people in these last days have changed from God's priorities. If I stay here from now till 7 o'clock and I keep telling you prophecy, what has that got to do with your life? Will it build you? It will excite you, no doubt. But will it, will it get you ready to deal with the devil? Train you to fight the fight of faith. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. It won't. But when I begin to teach the word of God, will it help you? Will it build you up? Will it strengthen you up? To fight the good fight of faith. Bible says faith cometh by what? By hearing. And hearing the word of God. I'm not saying prophecy is bad. But when it is our main preoccupation, something is wrong somewhere. God speaks. Are you hearing me now? The Bible is prophetic. Yes or no? If you don't know the prophecy of the Bible, any other prophecy is useless. Every other prophecy is only right when it is in context with the prophecy of the word of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? now? So this is how the church of today is being described. Because the church of today is filled with too many ignorant people. People that do not know. And people that are not ready to know. Something happened recently. I won't tell you the details. Praise God. Something happened recently in a particular church and uh, people were talking the truth is known to God. How many of you know that? God knows the truth about everything. I've not come here to say I know the truth. I was not there. But people say different kind of things. And then the members of that church were defending their pastors. I have no problem with that. Are you hearing me now? Because as a pastor too, if anything happens, I expect you to defend me. Are you with me? Not to hang me. If you hang me, then I'm finished. So they are defending their pastors. I don't have problem with that. But the area I begin to have problem with is they began to come to Facebook and practically curse people. And they began to curse people. And curse people. To the extent of saying that some people will die. Some people will die. Some people will die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now? I listened to some of those uh, outbursts. And I asked my wife, I said, what are we going, what, what, what did they do to this man that is commensurate to what they have done to Jesus? Did Jesus say anybody should die? Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I begin to find out what exactly are these people feeding on? What have they been feeding on? That's my own personal concern. Hello? Now, if anything happens now, and you defend, you want to support me, which is correct, which you should do, and then you now begin to curse people. And begin to curse people. And begin to say people should die. That people should die because they go against me. It's either I didn't do my job well to teach you the word of God or you didn't listen very well. So I have a lot of problems with that. Some people don't see anything wrong with that but I see something wrong with that because the Bible says by their fruit you will what? You know them. There are not two ways. So did you hear what I'm saying? When the fruit of your life is not correct, you are not correct. That there, there is no two way. That somebody doesn't like your pastor doesn't mean you will now say that people don't like your pastor should die. That's against the spirit of Christ. It shows that 
Maybe you have not been hearing the truth. You have not been developed as a disciple. Even Peter that, caught, that wanted to cut away the head of somebody that want to arrest Jesus. Jesus told him, put your sword back to his place. He who killed with his sword shall die by the sword. Yes or no? Don't, move, don't get moved and say people should die. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Paul had died, who would have written two thoughts of the New Testament? People that are not on your side today can be on your side tomorrow. What would have happened to them if they died? Don't be the one that will easily say people should die. It's a reflection of the demonic spirit inside you. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Jesus didn't come to destroy. He came to save. Praise God. I've had a lot of people that saw things differently than I see it. And who took a stand that is different from my stand. But I'm not going to tell God to kill them. I will only say, God, vindicate. Let the truth come out. Maybe I'm even wrong. Who knows? But when the truth come out, the two of us will know exactly where we stand. Did you hear what I'm saying now? And then they began to throw different videos. People that don't like a prophet to die. They should die before the end of this year. I said, what? What kind of feeding are they been feeding on? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If you do that, I will, if you are a worker, I will not only suspend you, I will deal with you. Because I don't expect that. Where are you going to put Matthew chapter 5 that says love your enemies? Are you hearing me now? So I begin to get confused. Because people can't do more than they know. People cannot do more than they know. God doesn't kill people. People kill themselves. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So they say the church of today is one kilometer wide and one inch deep. One inch deep, but one kilometer wide. But one inch deep. Is that a praise or a condemnation? Answer me. The church is one kilometer wide but one inch deep. I asked somebody, I said, what is one inch? Who can give me? Show me by your hand what one inch is. One inch. One inch. And that person did like this. That person did like this. So the church of today is not more than this in depth. But one kilometer wide. That's why the devil is defeating us. That's why the glory has not come. That's why the church of today is not a church that will last. That's why the church of today is filled with people that do not know and don't want to know. Don't be in that group. Be deep. Tell somebody, be deep. Say it again, be deep. Say it again, be deep. Say it again, be deep. Those believers who don't know and who don't want to know are liabilities to God and they are unfit to manifest the glory. They are liabilities to God and they are unfit to manifest the glory. Beloved, as we pray to them, this is one of the desires of my heart. Do you know that many people are in church now on a Sunday like this? Yes or no? You will know that people have gone to church. I ask myself, how good will it be if everybody that goes to church today are genuine? Even Nigeria will be transformed. Yes or no? Everybody that goes to church today, how good will it be when they are genuine? Even Nigeria will be transformed. 
But you know that is not the case. Many, many don't know God and they don't want to know God. Don't be in that group. Don't be in that group. Let it be your desire, your passion to know God. Let's rise up on our feet. I want you to pray this afternoon. Father, I want to know you. Father, I want to what? I want to know you. Don't even think you have known him before. Just tell him, Lord, I want to know you. Because there is no matter how much we know him before, we, are still not, we have still not known him the way we should know him. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you more. God will reveal himself to people who want to know him. God doesn't reveal himself to people who do not want to know him. So I want you to tell him personally this afternoon, Lord, I want to know you. I just want to know you more. I desire to know you more. I don't want to be in the group of the ignorant people. I don't want to be a liability to God. I want to manifest the glory of God in these last days. I want to know you more. I want to know your spirit. I want to know your word. I want to know your ways. I want to know your methods. Lord, show me your ways. Show me your word. Open my eyes to see wondrous things in your word. Let's begin to talk to the Lord this afternoon. It's not a common prayer. But it's a prayer that will lead to the manifestation of the glory. I want to know you more. More than I have ever known. More than I have ever known. I want to know you more. Reveal yourself to me like never before. Whatever is hindering your knowledge in my life, I break the yoke in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, they that know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. The knowledge of God is progressive. It will take you to a higher knowledge of him. It will take you to a higher revelation of him. Lord, I want to know you. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Every day, every minute, reveal yourself to me. In the name of Jesus. I want to know you. I will not despise the truth. I will not despise the knowledge of God. Show me your ways. Show me your word. Show me your truth. Show me your method. Let's talk to the Lord. Everything in my life that is hindering your knowledge, I break the yoke this afternoon. I break the yoke this afternoon. As from today, everything that is separating me from your knowledge, I break the yoke this afternoon. I want to know you more. From my heart, out of my own volition, I shall pay the price to know God more. These are days that we must commit to knowing him more. Knowing God will be my priority. Knowing God will be my focus. In the name of Jesus. Let's talk to the Lord this afternoon. When you open your heart, God will feel your passion. He will respond to your curiosity. He will reveal himself to you like never before. You will have a better revelation of God. I want to know you personally. Not just the God that they talk to me about. But the God that I have an encounter of. Oh Lord, encounter my life. Encounter my life. Reveal yourself to me personally. 
show me who you are in your word remove every blindness in the name of Jesus let it be the God that I have personal encounter with not the God that they are talking to me about every day let's talk to the Lord